Suzuki Sidekick 4-door. For years now, Suzuki's offered a range of basic 4x4s, but with a new 4-door Sidekick, it's taking a jump up market. We've looked at Sidekick before on this show, but Suzuki's launching of an extended wheelbase 4-door version prompted us to re-examine one of our favorite sport trucks. In fact, this truck is in addition to our long-term test fleet, so you'll be hearing more about it as time goes by. Although we tend to look at Suzuki as a newcomer in North America, it's worth mentioning that the company sold over a million 4x4s in 115 countries since getting into the off-roader business in 1955. Suzuki's made no secret of the fact that it's aimed these trucks at a fairly youthful market, and they seem to have been very successful judging by the numbers I see around in the hands of younger folks. These trucks are just as much at home in the suburbs as out in the bush. With its bulging wheel arches, neat wraparound bumpers and stubby look, this truck must be the trendiest thing on four wheels right now. Adding four doors and nearly a foot to its length makes it look even better and it is more practical. It seems to fit into a more opulent category now, although it doesn't cost as much as the likes of Nissan Pathfinder, Toyota 4Runner and other rivals. Earlier Suzuki's featured something of a bouncy ride and rear seat passengers suffered accordingly. With the sidekick, track has been increased and wheelbase lengthened for a much needed improvement in road manners. Having said that, I think the ride could be refined because it is a little choppy. But most of the harshness associated with earlier Suzuki 4x4s has been engineered out with this new sport truck and comfort is much enhanced. The sidekick is powered by a 1.6 litre four cylinder engine that develops 80 horsepower. No powerhouse, but it gets the job done quite well. Buyers can specify either five-speed manual or three-speed automatic transmissions. Our truck came with a positive shifting five-speed. 100 kilometers per hour should be attained in under 13 seconds, and fuel economy is in the all-round 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers range, quite miserly for a truck like this. A basic four-door sidekick costs five bucks short of $15,000, and a loaded version will run you about $19,500. Four-wheel drive is engaged with a two-speed transfer case and shifts can be made on the fly. With this setup, these trucks are serious off-road performers and I've been able to prove this to myself on many occasions in some pretty rough territory. Our test truck was well equipped and came with delightful interior treatment. A good-looking herringbone tweed cloth upholstery is used and the seats are well shaped to hold passengers in position during off-road excursions. Rear seats fold to provide a cargo deck, and there's some useful cabin stowage too. For a change, the dash top bins are deep enough to be used without spilling their contents every time you go around a corner. Instrumentation is well organized and switches and controls work well. I like the smooth acting wiper and turn signal stalks, which have neat little rubber gaiters like gear levers. Suzuki wins praise from us for its sidekick central locking system. All doors and the hatch can be unlocked with one turn of the key in either the front door or the hatch itself. It sounds simple, but this ideal system has proved beyond the capability of most domestic makers and large numbers of overseas manufacturers. This neat little truck deserves comparison with more costly 4x4s like the Nissan Pathfinder, Toyota 4Runner and Isuzu Trooper. It also stands up well against the Chevy Blazer and Jeep Cherokee. But I like this one, Ted. I like it a lot, too. It's not perfect. I, I think it could use more power. It's a little too small inside for my taste. The ride's a little choppy, but this is a very good little rig. I like that feature that you mentioned about the central locking. It's such a simple thing, but so many car makers get it wrong. This, 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 exactly. Yeah, this, I was going to say that the, the, this sidekick has all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's very sensible. It's not spectacular, but it's sensible, good value. Intelligently designed, I think, a lot of features in it are very well designed and much better than... I think when, when they originally launched this vehicle, it was shown to me at least mm -hmm. alongside the Jeep, a standard sort of Jeep, uh, YJ, right. and um, I thought it was it, streets ahead really in terms of features and, and so forth. And, and as you say, the locking system, why it's so hard for yeah, manufacturers to do this, I don't know. No. But uh, the only problem I had with was that uh, slightly choppy ride that these short yeah. wheelbase I guess have in space. Uh, all you can say really is that it comes with the territory, but if you compare this to the old uh, Samurai that uh, Suzuki basically broke the North American market with, it's just day and night. I mean this car is, is so much more refined and so much better engineered than the 
the, the sidekick. I'm surprised they're even from the same company, actually. Well, the Samurai, yeah. I'm surprised they kept the Samurai around, really, because it's, it's kind of outdated now, and they must be selling uh, plenty of these, because you don't have to pay this much for it. If you've got a short wheelbase, one in basic trim, it, it's pretty cheap. Uh, and and also, uh, I was just going to... Uh, People that buy these things, they don't realize how good they are off-road. I mean, by far the majority of use of this vehicle is going to be in the city. The same with the, the two-door sidekick. True. But if you want to take this thing off-road, you couldn't pick a better car for it. It's very, very good. You're absolutely right. I've taken these into some really bad territory in, in the British Columbia mountains, logging roads, washed-out roads, and so forth. It's very, very good indeed. It's not comfortable to, to ride in, but no. we can forgive them that, I think. And, the, and I like the size. I think it, it mm -hmm. fills a gap between the, the tiny kind of samurai kind of thing and one mm -hmm. or two other things like the Lada Neva. It fills a, a useful gap. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. wrap up here. Things I didn't like, the choppy ride, a uh, bit of a a thing to endure, and fuel economy wasn't too good either. Lots of things on the plus side, though styling is very, very nice, very attractive styling, off-road performance, better than one might expect, and that wonderful central locking system. Driving dollar value, I'll give it seven-eighths of a tank, it would have made the full tank except for the choppy ride.